In a different video, I had covered the NTFS feature of alternate data streams, which Microsoft uses to improve the user experience by providing a method of hiding some certain files from the ordinary user. These files have certain forensic implications, and I covered how to use the command prompt in PowerShell to explore the alternate data streams. In this video, I will be using Linux, specifically the Kane 13 distro, to access the alternate data streams on an NTFS disk volume. If you're using another distro, you may need to install various drivers, including the NTFS-3G, by doing sudo apt install NTFS-3G. Let's start by mounting an NTFS volume that I had set up as slash dev slash loop2. I'm going to mount it to the mount point named slash mnt slash ntfs that I will create now. So I'm going to do sudo make dir slash mnt slash ntfs. And then I'm going to mount it by doing sudo mount slash dev slash loop2 slash mnt slash ntfs. After successfully mounting, I will go ahead and change the directory to the mount point of slash mnt slash ntfs and see what we have which should be nothing because I just created this volume. So cd slash nt slash ntfs semicolon ls dash l. And just like in Windows, I can use text-based tools to create and add content to a file. So let's go ahead and add some content to a file named newfile.txt. I'm gonna do cat, redirect into newfile.txt. And I'm gonna just go and type uh, some gibberish text, four scores, and seven years ago, Steinbeck published of mice and men. And I'm going to hit Control D to end the cat session there. All right, so now I'm going to do an LS minus L. And we can see that new text.file is now created. And again, like in Windows, I can add an alternate data stream in the file new file.txt by using the colon notation with the file name. So I'm going to do cat, redirect into new file.txt, colon s1, right? So I'm just naming my stream s1. And the information I'm going to type in there is just secret message in this stream. Uh, control D again. All right, and now we can read it back to make sure we got the right info there by doing cat new file.txt, colon s1. And that looks like what we typed in. And lastly, let's go ahead and do an ls minus l to see what we have. Wait a minute. This is not what we wanted to do, right? Um, I didn't actually want to have two files. I just wanted to have one file, and then the other one should be an alternate data stream. But what I ended up doing is creating a file with uh, the stream name because I see the colon there. And this really is because I mounted this volume using the default NTFS driver, which actually does not support alternate data streams with the Windows format. So what we need to be doing is using the Windows version of the streams uh, interface when we're mounting this NTFS volume. Otherwise, when you try to do the colon for the alternate data stream, uh, Linux will be perfectly happy to create a file with a colon in the file name, which is legal in the Linux world but is not kosher in the Windows world. So I'm gonna go ahead and unmount the volume and then mount it again, and then specifying the proper option. So first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that file, rm new file.txt colon s1, so that we don't get confused. Do an ls minus l, we actually can see that the file is gone. Then cd dash to get out of the mount point. And then sudo umount of slash mnt slash ntfs to unmount the mount point. And then I'm going to mount it up again by doing sudo mount dash t, right? This time I'm going to specify the ntfs dash 3g as the file system, along with dash o, the option of streams underscore interface equals windows. Right, so this tells the system that I'm using the Windows format for handling alternate data streams. And then again, slash dev slash loop2 slash mnt slash ntfs. Right, so now I'm going to add an alternate data stream 
to the new file.txt by using a colon notation with the same file name. I'm going to basically head back in the, I'm going to cd back in the slash mnt slash ntfs, the mount point. Cat, redirect into new file.txt colon s1. I'm going to type in secret message in the stream and then colon and then control D to finish it off. Doing an ls minus L, I see only the new file.txt, right? So that's that's a good thing. So now when we created a stream to the file, it behaves just like in Windows, where the listing only shows one file, but we know that the data stream is there as we can get the contents by doing a cat, right? So I'm gonna do cat new file.txt colon s1. And we see that the data is there. And there are other clues that there is an alternate data stream uh, that exists for a file. So let me set this up by adding another stream to new file.txt. And we'll just create a new stream named license with the content from an existing file. So I'm going to cat slash temp slash quasar version 1.4.0 slash license and redirect that to new file.txt colon license. Now we have two streams set up. If you know the name of the stream, you can simply do a ls minus l of uh, the names of the stream. So I'm gonna do ls minus l of new file.txt colon s1 and new file.txt colon license. And we can see that we have the two files and their respective file sizes. So I try to use the while card, but it doesn't seem to work. Um, you actually actually need to know the name of the stream, right? So if I do ls minus l of new file.txt colon star, that just gives me an error. All right, so before we move on, let me add one more stream to this file. So I'm gonna cat redirect into new file.txt colon blah, right? I'm just gonna call this stream blah and type in the words blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a listing again to verify that we did create this third stream. So I'm just gonna do up arrow and then add to the end of this new file.txt colon blah. And sure enough, we do have all three streams, okay? And to delete a stream, we can just use the rm command. So rm new file.txt colon blah. But as you can see, it failed. So for some odd reason, I discovered that you actually have to use the dash F force option before the stream is removed. So rm dash F new file dot text colon blah. So let's go ahead and arrow up again to do a listing of all three streams. And sure enough, we see that new file dot text colon blah, that stream has been deleted. So we can error there but these S1 and license streams are still there, so we can see those listed out. All right, so getting a listing is very useful, but it seems like you kind of need to know the names of the streams already. If you don't know the name of the streams, what you can do is use the get FATTR command along with a special attribute. So we're gonna do get FATTR dash N for the naming of the attribute, and the attribute is ntfs.streams.list. And we're gonna look at the new file.txt. So now we see the names of the streams separated by the character slash 000, right? It's just the, um, the null character there. So we see S1 and we see license. So this is the way you can use to find the names of the alternate data streams from the files. Now I'm gonna add back one more stream to new file.txt as I had done earlier. So same thing, just cat greater than new file dot text colon blah, and then just type in blah, 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 right? And when I go ahead and up arrow again to do the get FATTR to get the names of the streams, this time that list is now just some gibberish, right? It's not, not legible, right? I don't see um, the word blah in there. I don't see license. I don't see S1. And I'm not sure why the names are screwed up, but I do have a fix for this. So the way around this is to unmount the volume and then remount it with another mounting mode of streams underscore interface. And so I'm gonna go CD dash, 
and then sudo umount slash mnt slash ntfs. So I'm going to remount it again with sudo mount dash t ntfs dash 3g dash o streams underscore interface equals x a t t r. Right, so this is the extended attributes. And once we mount it in this manner, we're going to be able to use the extended attribute utilities to access the streams. XATTR is actually the default mounting option if we don't specifically specify this option here. And there's also a third option of specifying the word none, N-O-N-E. And when you do that, then there's no access to the streams at all, either with Windows mode or in the extended attributes mode. So to round this out, again, slash dev slash loop2 slash mnt slash ntfs. And then I'm going to cd back into the mount point by cd dash and then ls dash l to see what we have here. And once again, it's just new file.txt, so that's the same. And so now, if we want to take a look at the name of the streams for this file, you can use attr dash l for long listing of new file.txt. And what we see here now is the attributes or stream name of blah, which has 16 bytes. The stream named license is 1,084 bytes. And the stream named S1 is 30 bytes. So one thing that we can't do in this XATTR mode is we can't use the colon notation anymore. So if we try to cat new file.txt colon blah, we will get an error. So in the XATTR mounting mode, if you want to see the contents of the alternate data stream, we will now need to use the get FATTR command with the dash M option. So I'm going to type get FATTR dash M. And so dash M stands for matching. And so we want to match the stream name, in my case of blah, right? So dash M blah. And then once we match, what we want to do is dump out the value for that match attribute. So we're going to specify dash D. And once again, we're looking at the new file.txt. So that's what we specify. So now we get the content of the stream, blah. So it's just blah, blah, blah. All right, that's pretty much it. So now that we're done with the NTFS volume, I'm going to clean up to get prepared for the next block by unmounting the disk image. So once again, you got to CD out of the mount point by CD and CD dash. And then sudo umount slash mnt slash ntfs. If you're working with an image file and not actually mounting the NTFS volume, then we can use Brian Carrier's sleuth kit to help us with the alternate data streams. The cane distro that I'm using already comes with the sleuth kit installed. But if you're running another distro, you may need to get that code from GitHub. So see the link in the description below. So the command to dump out all of the files within a volume is fls. And you will see all of the alternate data streams for each file. You will know that they are alternate data streams because one, they have the same IDNO number, but they also have different stream names. This command will dump out all of the files within that volume. And you will see all of the alternate data streams for each file. The way you can tell is that it's going to be the same inode for the main file and for all the streams of that file. And again, you will see the colon notation for the file names. So I'm going to do sudo fls and then specify an ntfs volume with the dash f. And then I'm going to specify the dash p option to display the full path for each entry, and then also the R for recursive to go through the entire uh, file structure. Um, this is a pretty simple example, so we're not going to get very far. Uh, lastly, you specify the name of the image, which for me is slash dev slash loop2. So as you can see here, it dumps out all of the files that are in this NTFS volume, including the master file table and all these other files that are part of NTFS. The real files that a user can see is down here, uh, starting with new file.txt. And then we'll also, also see the three streams for new file.txt. And once again, you see here, 64 is the IDNO number for new file.txt. And it's also the IDNO number for all of its streams. 
And you can again recognize a stream by the colon notation. All right, so I believe that this is a little too much information for what I need, especially if I actually have a lot more files. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go up arrow and use the grep command to basically pare this down a little bit. So I'm gonna use regular expression to basically only look for lines that contain a character represented by the dot and then a colon, right? Because I want the colon file names and then anything that is not a white space because if you look at over here, uh, you have a colon followed by a white space for basically literally every line. So I don't want all these to pop up. I only want things that look like this to pop up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell it um, to not give me white spaces. So this is the regular expression for that. And lastly, I also don't want anything that has the dollar sign because those are the special NTFS files, like the ones over here. All right, so now we've pared it down to only the files that are of interest to me, like I said, which is new files three streams. And this fourth one here is basically the uh, deleted version that we had deleted at one point. And if we want to go down and look at the contents of any of the streams, we can use the iCat command along with the iNode number and the stream number. So we can do sudo iCat dash F NTFS again, because that's a file system, and then point it at the image. So for me, it's uh, slash dev loop two. And if I want to look at the blah file, we see here that it's I know it is 64. And then the stream numbers is 128-7. Okay, so once I hit enter, we do see the contents, which is just blah, blah, blah. And if this is actually a malware file that you are trying to capture, you probably don't want to cut it out on the screen, right? You want to probably redirect it to a file, All right? So we can just do redirect into the file license and you can run whatever you want to run on uh, that file. Now, basically it is the exact file that was the stream. So alternate data streams isn't just for Windows. Since it's an NTFS artifact, we can use Linux to access those streams, including creating and deleting them. Just make sure you have the three key ingredients to make this work. First, you need to be working on an NTFS volume. Second, you need to mount the volume with the NTFS driver with the proper value for streams underscore interface. And third, if you're working with an image, you need the Sleuth Kit toolset. For more Linux forensics videos, watch these videos here. Click the blue monkey to subscribe if you believe that broken pencils are pointless. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.